Today we're going to be talking about dating at BYU. Basically, I'm a student here at BYU, and as a student here at BYU, I can't help but get a weird taste in my mouth whenever I hear the word date. You see, dating here is taken seriously. Approximately 98% of BYU students are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as Mormons. We believe that when you get married to somebody, you're not just married till death do you part, but you're married for all time and eternity, which after Googling it, I've realized is a very, very long time. Makes sense why dating is such a big deal here. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had enough with this wacky dating culture, which is why in this video, we are gonna be diving head first into the dating culture of BYU Provo to unlock the secret to effective dating through scientific research, analysis, and experimentation so that you can take it and use it for your own good and so that I can personally get over my crushing fear of asking girls out. Dude, wait, you're afraid to ask girls out? Did that come out? That's the, I didn't say that. So what's your theory about dating? My theory? Well, you see, it's pretty simple actually. Everybody knows that the best kind of date is an expensive date. Like the more you spend, the more the girl will love you. It's just like common knowledge. At least that's what I learned from watching the Kardashians and uh, I mean, they've never steered me wrong before. To begin my hunt for the secret of BYU dating, I decided the first move would be to interview its very victims, AKA other students. Action. To ensure that they would answer honestly, I decided to conceal my identity for scientific purposes. <laughs> what? You just, you have a mustache now. I, I, I always had a mustache. <laughs> no, no, because a few seconds ago I didn't see you with, with a mustache. All natural. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of weird that you're bringing it up right now. What? I mean, I just, I'm surprised that the um, testing center let you get in with that. I just think you're a funny guy, Enoch. Who's Enoch? I don't know. Oh, I'm not Enoch. Enoch left. He's not here right now. Who are you then? That's classified. I'm doing some investigative research on Brigham Young University and like the dating culture of Provo. So I want to ask you, on a scale from one to 10, how would you rate it? With 10 being the dating scene is so good that even if I did get married, I'd get divorced just so I could go back through it again. <laughs> And one being, it's so terrible, I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. It sucks, I hate it. It keeps me up at night. I'd rather eat a Tide Pod. What'd you rate it as? Three. Five. I'd probably go with four. Three or four, I'll say three. I'll give it a four. Five. Six. Seven. Five. Seven. Here. Nine. Do what you honestly feel. Okay, fine. Okay, five. <laughs> what do you think are some of the things that might be keeping it from a 10? Uh, I would say it's probably not the best. A little stressful sometimes. There's a lot of extremes in Provo dating culture. A lot of the perspectives on dating here are really strange to me. People are just in such a rush to get into relationships and get married. Going on maybe like multiple dates per week with the same, like with different people before really getting to know any of them. Everyone wants options, no one wants to choose. Like they want to have the option to go on a bunch of dates, but they don't really end up choosing anyone. That people would date to get to know a girl, but not necessarily to get to know me as a person. I didn't always feel seen on all the dates I went on. I think because dating is so heavily like emphasized, you get this like doing dating for the sake of doing dating. And so you get a lot of people that just like date out of Pressure. 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 A lot mm -hmm. of other people have talked about there's like pressure involved. Why do you think that's such a pressure? And is that like a bad thing? Is that a good thing? I think it comes from being at BYU. I love BYU, but I think everyone and their dog wants to get married by the summer. I would say a lot of it is peers. Peers, but also from my family and leaders. Tradition, like your parents get married at 20 and you're like, oh, this is how it goes. And also like church culture as well. Return missionaries, a lot of, there's a lot of emphasis on like, you know, start looking for a spouse. I feel like that's like their main focus and they're just like driven on it. There needs to be like, solid expectations on both sides, like girls need to ask and guys need to ask. It comes from caring too much what other people think. I think realizing that there is no actual time that you're supposed to get married by, I think that can help take off some of the unnecessary pressure. Here's a question for you. Are oh, wow, girls okay. allowed to ask right. guys out? I think so, personally. Okay. Yeah, you should step up, take some of the workload off of us, okay? Okay, okay. It's hard. You have no idea what could happen. Like, picture this. Go up, you ask a girl out, and then she says no, and then she hits you in the face with a pie. And then <laughs> she pepper sprays you. Oh gosh. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. she takes your shoes. What would you say is like the ideal first date? Something short 
and active. Okay. So not a six hour date. The thing that makes the date like a really good date is just getting to know the other person. The short and sweet dates where you actually like get to know each other. Being able to have like a nice conversation, getting to know them. Something like super chill that you can like talk a lot. Talking with them, personal connection. So it almost sounds like you're saying it's all just about the connection. Yeah, it's making a friend. Do you think there's a dollar amount that's associated with a good date? No. More money equals Oh gosh, date? no. No? More really? money stresses me out. Really? Yes. I don't think so, necessarily. No? No. I think it's just, you just gotta be fun. I think if they put effort into it, that goes to show a lot, but it doesn't have to be money. To an extent, I think it's more important um, the experience you have with that person. The currency that we should be worrying about has less to do with the monetary currency and more to do with the creative currency. So not a lot of money. No. Not even a little bit. Like, let's say in the Marriott Center, and they do the BYU devotional and everybody's there. Kevin Worthen himself got up and said, hey, we're going to have you give like your quick like five word sermon. Best piece of dating advice that all of you need to hear right now. And he gave you the microphone. What would you say? Oh my gosh. I would say, honestly, just have fun. Talk to everyone. There's so many people here. You might as well take advantage of it. <laughs> just be yourself. If it's going to work out with you and the other person, it's going to work out because you're yourself. You have time. and. You can get married after college, contrary to popular beliefs. Don't kiss on the first date. That's what's up. I agree with that. Don't kiss on the first date. Yeah. If you're trying to kiss on the first date, your head isn't where it should be. Understand who you are and what your expectations are before getting into a relationship. Find people that help you be yourself. Don't confuse preferences with actual deal breakers. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the season of your life. I think the most important thing you can do is be worthy of spiritual, personal revelation. Just trust yourself along with trusting the spirit. This isn't meant to be a plug, but legitimately, like it's just inner mindset helped a lot. I, if, if you're not familiar with that, it's this idea that it's just dinner. Like you're gonna eat dinner anyway. So like you might as well just meet someone and have an experience with them and then let it kind of just go from there, you know? So where could I go to learn more about the, the dinner thing? So I actually took an advertising class. Um, it was by Professor Robinson. He uh, started up this podcast kind of discussing the negative and positive things that happen in the dating culture here at BYU and that's where I learned about that. There's a whole podcast he's created about it. Yeah. And he teaches at BYU. Yeah, he does. After interviewing the victims of dating, I decided that my next course of action would be to talk to the very man who had supposedly unlocked its secrets, aka Dr. Tom Robinson. How are you? Doing good, Dr. Nice Robinson. Thanks um, for joining us. Got a little something. Oh, sorry. Oh. I, yeah, my bad. I don't... I don't know what that was. I thought it was chocolate. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, today. thanks for having me. We had some people point us in your direction, tell us that you might know a thing or two about dating and Provo. I know a little. Yeah, I know so much I do a podcast on it. The first question I want to ask you that we asked everybody else okay. is on a scale from one to 10, where would you say the overall dating scene is? How would you rate it? Oh, wow. Wow, you had, for a second, you, I you had you there me. for a minute, but <laughs> yeah, I was going to pick eight, didn't you? Why a three? Well, it's not a one, but um, I think the biggest problem is that people aren't dating. They're choosing not to date. They translate dating into marriage, and that's a problem. It's like when I go on a date, I'm doing that so I can marry you. Or when you ask me out on a date, I assume you want to get married to me. And that's what's wrong with the dating culture. So not dating. Okay. Not going out, being too scared, too afraid to ask, um, not getting asked out is a huge problem. And then when they do date, it's all about marriage. So you're saying that instead of like the middle ground, it's just either one extreme end or the other, where it's like no I, dates or just like marriage right now. Yes. That's my opinion. That's where I think we are. And quite honestly, I don't think that's just a... BYU problem. And I don't think it's just a Utah problem. I think that problem exists throughout the entire United States. You teach advertising. I do. Specifically the, the strategy. Yes. Track. I'm a strategist. That's how why I say I'm a self-proclaimed dating expert because I've, I've studied this. I've put a lot of time and effort in trying to figure it out. What do you think are the things keeping it from being a 10? I, I think fear is probably the number one. And what's funny in our culture is you have a bunch of returned missionaries who knock on doors all the time and they get home and they're afraid to talk to a girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is really strange and odd to me. And, and this is true for the, the girls as well. It's not just a boy problem. The girls are just as afraid. They're just as nervous. 
However, they're waiting for the boys to ask them out and the boys just aren't, aren't doing it. Why do you think that is? Where do you think this fear is coming from? Okay, this is my, one of my theories is I think that my generation are the ones that has caused this problem. My generation and your parents' generation, we caused this problem. And it's very simple. We told you to not date because what we wanted to do is to get you on a mission. That was the most important thing. And for the girls, we wanted them to get married in the temple. And to be able to do those two things, we told you to not date. And that, it, that you were allowed to date only in a group. And group dates are a pain in the butt. And then the next thing that happens, you go on a mission and the very next thing that happens is your mission president tells you to go get married. And now there's this huge panic that goes on inside. And it's the idea that you now you want me to get married, I've never been on a date. That's where I think the problem came from. Not, not all the problems, but if I had to put a percentage on it, 75%. And that's where this whole it's just dinner thing came from. What is the whole theory behind it's just dinner? It's Did just you dinner. see his smile uh, when I brought it up? <laughs> yeah, no, thank, thank you for finally getting there. This is, and it's so simple. It's so simple. It's the idea of let's get rid of the word dating. Let's get rid of the idea of dating. We're afraid of dating. We're nervous about dating. There's commitment with dating. So let's get rid of it. Now, just ask someone to go to dinner. Now it could be ice cream or it can be hot chocolate. Or it can be anything. Just ask them to go to dinner because the one thing we all have in common is that we eat. And it's so easy to share a meal and sit across from someone to look into their eyes and talk. We talk about dinner a lot, but what it is is the talking. That's what's important. Now what's happened is I've, I'm doing something with you that we both like we're talking we're just getting to know each other and all of a sudden now a lot of my anxiety is gone a lot of the nervousness is gone and here's the beauty of the whole thing about it's just dinner it's not a date it's just dinner that means there's no expectation of a second date there's no expectation of a relationship there's no expectation of romance all those expectations are gone so you have your dinner you say hey thanks that was great it was a great dinner so nice to get to know you I had so much fun talking to you. And then you go your separate ways. Now, here's the thing. If it's going well and you're talking, you're having a great time, then ask the person on a date, on a real date. You know, then you don't, who knows what happens from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, just have fun. Dating is supposed to be about having fun. It's not supposed to be about marriage. It's supposed to be about having fun. Have fun talking and getting to know someone. And, and by the way, the girls should ask boys out too. The boys are nervous, so girls don't sit home alone. Don't sit home and be depressed. Ask a young man to go to dinner with you or invite them to come over and make a meal with you. Don't sit home alone. Boys rarely turn down food. And you know, the boys want to get to know the young women just as much as they do. They're just nervous to do it. And then, and of course, boys ask the young women. They, and the young women want to go. They want to talk. They want to get to know you. And, and by the way, this dinner should only be an hour. I can give you an hour of my life and we can sit down and talk. Worst case scenario, you make a friend. Worst case scenario, you get to know someone better. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's a pretty there, good that's, deal. Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty good deal. Marriage is not the goal in this. But the thing is, is that somehow magically it happens. I wouldn't go into it expecting that, but sometimes it just, it works out that way. There's a quote I heard once that's all pain is caused by unmet expectations. So that's, it sounds like what you're saying is exactly, like the exactly way to remove right. the pain from dating is to just set the expectations like yeah, down yeah. there. Yeah, it, it relieves all those negative expectations that you have. On top of that, you're saying that the amount of money spent on the dinner also does not matter. Yeah, absolutely not. The young woman, for example, does not want you to spend a lot of money on her. She doesn't want to have to invest that much in you. She's okay with you spending $15. Do you ever get worried though that like people just start associating the word dinner with date? No, not really. It can be just a, a soda, it can be a hot chocolate, it can be an ice cream, you know? So there's so many things that it can be that I don't know if I have to worry too much about dinner. What if the person asking someone out to go to dinner is just not, they just feel like they're not confident in their ability to hold a conversation. The thing about conversation is just like what you and I are doing, it takes practice. It's not easy, it's not easy, but you can do it if you practice enough. Some people have discussed that during a date, they don't really feel like people are actually trying to connect with them because they feel like that person's just trying to hit a quota. And they're afraid to commit even because they're worried about what if the one is just around the corner. Ugh, I hate that one. I, I would say don't get involved with that person. You say, hey, thanks, this was fun. You get in your car and leave because they need to grow up. Remember I said dating is about having fun and being kind. And that's not kind. A lot of people talked about the pressure to get married quick. It, it's funny because everyone talks about how much they dislike it, but 
we all like still feel it, <laughs> you all, know? We like, all fall into it. Is there anything that people can like do or, or just, I don't know, a good mindset to not let it get to them? Yeah, um, stop it. Stop doing it. Stop doing it to yourself. Stop doing it to your friends. Stop doing it to your roommates. Tell your parents to knock it off. Tell your bishop to knock it off. Tell everyone to knock it off because it can't be about marriage. We're ruining ourselves by making it about marriage. And what's happening is it's not that we're ruining ourselves because we, we're, we're getting married. We're ruining ourselves because a lot of people are hiding in their apartments and they're all alone. And then things like depression and getting on the computer happen. Or we get into the wrong marriage or we get into a bad situation. Just stop it. Just stop doing it. Again, go have fun. And you know what? If you go out and you have fun, you have dinner and you talk, guess what? You start dating. And guess what happens then? Then you get engaged and then you get married. I don't know how it happens. It just does. Go out and have fun and get to know as many of our Heavenly Father's children as you can. Just have a good time talking to people and getting to know them. You should go listen to my podcast. And where can they find you again? Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, SoundCloud, any of those, we're on all of those. You just go to the It's Just Dinner podcast. And really, we just want people to have fun, to talk, to get to know each other. That's really all we want. Could it really be that simple? It sounds too good to be true and too cheap. There is no way that a cheap, simple dinner date is better than an all-out expensive one. I mean, there's just no way. But the man does have a podcast, so he must know what he's talking about. Everyone with a voice on the internet always knows what they're talking about. There must be a way to experiment with this, a way to test it, a way to... I got it. We found four random BYU students and set them up as two blind dates. Both of these two couples are going to go on a blind date and then meet back up afterwards. You guys go to that car and you guys go to that car. Go! Take that. All right, that's the thing. <laughs> How do you feel? Great. Look at, look at all this gear we got going on. This is legit. All right, we just go. Let's do this thing. <laughs> now here's what they don't know. This couple over here is actually going to go on the most expensive BYU day ever, coming in at just over one thousand dollars. Hey, sorry, this isn't actually your ride. Go and come out. Go and come on out. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, your actual ride is over there. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going in. Goodness. I got these for you. Oh, thank you. Oh my goodness. That is very sweet. Hopefully it doesn't spill all over the place. Hey, but what about the other date? Oh, them? <laughs> Just dinner. All right, so here's the catch. After both of these dates have finished, we're going to bring them back together, then we're gonna hook both of them up to an actual lie detector test. We're gonna finally, once and for all, see which is better. The big, expensive, fancy date, or it's just dinner. There you go. All right, everybody. We're going to pho, pho, pho. pho. Hey, just two, yeah. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, what's flank? I don't even know. Okay, so I'm saying, I don't tripe. I don't know. Just different. While Benson and Macy were pulling up to their dinner, Josh and Sophie were just barely pulling up to their first activity of the night. Diet Coke. And that's gonna be it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Where did you get your shirt from? Your sweater shirt? It's a sh uh, shirt, sure. I Mexico? got it. No, I got it at a thrift store in Milan. No way. You were, why were you in Milan? So we went to France, Switzerland, and Italy. And while we were in Italy, we went to Milan. And France, Switzerland, and Italy? 
Mm -hmm. Where did you go see in Switzerland? I'm going there this summer. We went and saw the Dolomites. The what? So it's really famous mountains that look like, you know the back of like a dinosaur, how there's like, the look, there would be like a rock. There's like a bunch like, of these. Wait, what? Like, know, the, okay, spike, the, well. the spiky Like things? the spikes on the back, yeah. but like big ones. Yeah. There's mountains that look like that. Let me see a picture. Um, oh. I have other pictures, but it's like they're super skinny and really tall. Interesting. Now while they're going on their dates, I'm gonna take a quick second to tell you guys about today's sponsor, The Hive Collaborative. The Hive Collaborative is a unique, versatile space and production facility that aims to provide everything you need to fulfill your wildest creative dreams. The space has been designed to be as versatile as possible to fit your needs. It can be used as a wedding venue, a party space, a live theater, a film set, a meeting space, a podcast room, a photo studio, an editing suite, or even a spot for a good nap. And what's more, it's conveniently located right here in Provo, Utah, and they want to help you have the resources you need to create something incredible. So head over to thehivecollaborative.com or click the link below to schedule a tour today. What's your favorite thing to do like around Provo? Around Provo? Mm -hmm. Play like football in the snow. Oh, okay. Tackle each other. We tried to go sledding and we didn't have sled, so I used a pizza box. But then I, and everyone laughed, but it worked. It did? I mean, it, it did look super ghetto, but it did it did work and it did shred my hands so I didn't have any gloves. Oh. And you kind of just have to like hold it on the yeah. sides. So like that sucked, but it worked. Before I forget, I also need to tell you guys that before the state even started, we took Sophie all the way up to Salt Lake to get her a $100 blow dry bar hair and makeup experience. And we also took Josh over to DC Tuxedos in Provo to get him a $200 black tie tuxedo rental. Okay, now on with the video. So wait, what's your hope with medical school? What do you want to do with that? I, I want to do something specific. Like I don't, I want to specialize. Yeah. But I don't want to do cosmetic. I really hope to like somehow incorporate promoting like body positivity in some mm. sort of way in my career because mm. it's just like something I'm very passionate about. Like why do we idolize these celebrities and when everyone is just different and that's just genetics? Like why do we care? Yeah. Another part of it. I don't know how I can describe it. What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Okay. That's not well that was Welcome my, back. Welcome back. Welcome back. How's it going? Which appetizer do you want? Homemade soup of the day, garlic bread, garlic knots, fresh cut fries, fried onion rings, buffalo wings, strips with french fries. We can just get it. Oh, let's get let's just get all of it then. That was super good. I don't know where they went. They didn't. Now, with both dates finally finished, it was time for everyone to meet back up at the hive and find out which date was actually the more effective date. In order to uncover the secret of dating, we brought in Josh, a professional lie detector expert who was going to interview the dates and find out which one was actually better. Have you ever taken a polygraph before? No. You seen fake ones? No. Online, like on Psych or something. Probably kind of seen how it works. I'm gonna ask you two questions to get a baseline. Okay. We got eight more after that. Answer them all yes or no, and just answer them honestly. Cool. You ever watch Psych? No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm starting Jeez. off on a bad foot. <laughs> Is your name Josh? Yes. Joshua, technically. Oh well, yeah. Is your name Benson? Yes. Is your name Sophie? Yes. Do you think so? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Is your name Macy? Yes. Do you attend Brigham Young University? I do. Did your date meet your expectations for a first date? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like you honestly got to know your date? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Did you enjoy the length of your date? Yeah, I'd say so. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> it was definitely longer than usual. I, am I supposed to say just like yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. Final answer? Yes. Did you feel you were able to be yourself? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Did the amount of money spent on the date make you uncomfortable? No. No. No? Mm, no. Not, not uncomfortable. It's definitely different, but no. Would you feel comfortable going on a date like this again? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not like a lot, <laughs> but like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you think Enoch could pass for Brad Pitt? <laughs> for Brad Pitt? Enoch could pass for Brad Pitt? No. No. <laughs> I, I have seen like very Brad Pitt movies. <laughs> Do you know who he is at least though? Yes, definitely, 100%, without a doubt. No questions asked. World War Z, Bullet Train. Oh, this is so embarrassing for me. Those are the only two Brad Pitt movies. I yeah, is there like you. another one? I don't think so, I mean maybe, more than the average person, but like, Do you no. Say yes or no? No. Well, now that my ego's been brutally ripped to shreds, let's see the results. And finally, after interrogating both dates, we finally got enough data, Josh. Between the it's just dinner date and the $1,000 date, which date was more successful? According to all the compiled data, the it's just dinner date was more successful. <laughs> well, you know what they say, you once think you're right, and then later you might find out you're wrong. You know what, that's stupid, just cut to the next shot. Okay, okay, so maybe that wasn't the most sound scientific experiment ever, but I think everyone got the point. A date doesn't have to be anything big or fancy or expensive. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a date. It could just be dinner. I think the thing that we all learned here is as long as we're just trying to be kind and have fun, then it doesn't matter. It's just easy and the right person will come along. Dude, that actually totally makes sense. You, know, we sh you should just go ask that girl out over there. Like, honestly, her? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. I mean, yeah, right now. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Hey, it, 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 hey, sorry to bother you. Um, I was just wondering, would you possibly want to go out sometime, maybe? No. Oh, that's okay. I, I, I tried. Dude, Dude what? Oh, 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 you know, it's okay. It wasn't even that bad, all right? Oh my gosh, oh yeah. my Dude, oh, Dude, it's just water, it's just water, it's okay. Dude, are you okay? Yeah, you know, it actually wasn't that bad if I'm being honest with you. So, you know, we really conquered the day. Where are your shoes, dude? I hate dating. Hey! Hey, wait up! Posted up in Provo with the RM life. Plowing through school just to find a wife. Only getting through exams by God's grace. To quote my man Brigham Young, this is the place. 